acoustics, something many are obsessed by, often splurging incredible amounts of money on technology in the pursuit of better and better sound. But acoustics is not merely limited to electric guitarists painting over which amp they should buy. It is also the studies of the properties of sound. A simple statement, yet it has far-reaching influences which reach not only deep into our psyche, but also into an inconceivably huge part of our lives and decision-making. Almost nearly all parts of our species' lives is influenced by it. Even looked at and used within the modern era as a main component within military weaponry. However, the term acoustic can also mean, and I quote, the properties or qualities of a room or building that determine how sound is transmitted in it. And this area is the one which we find tremendously interesting, as during our ongoing and in-depth research into many sites all over the world, coming to know a vast amount of interesting factors regarding a large swath of already studied, or rather exposed sites within the modern mainstream. The Hypogeum in Malta being one of them, an extraordinary site that has been explored in detail and discovered to possess incredible acoustic abilities. Abilities which have been found at the site in question within this video. Yet we feel the connections between these remarkable sites need to be looked at closer and the possibility that a now lost yet highly advanced seemingly acoustically obsessed ancient civilization not only once existing becomes ever more likely but that they succeeded in discovering incredible things things we are yet to fully understand regarding acoustic resonance so much so that it allowed them to be the original builders of these marvelous structures it was first thought that seven circular structures which are located around the sacred hill and on the neighboring hills, represented the Sun, Moon, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Mercury. However, interestingly, it was later hypothesized that there may be a grave monument and a sacred area still preserved here. Interestingly, it seems although it is thought that pagans in Somatage climbed up the sacred hill within permitted history, the team have not attributed them with the achievement of creating the sites. This, to us, seems highly unusual. So much so, we may actually be witnessing a change in attitudes within academic study. If so, this is an enormous victory on ours, and more importantly, truth's behalf. Additionally, they have seemingly, bravely, put forward a quote which we also find highly intriguing, for it is one we feel which would have once been dismissed, yet another grain of inclination that strategies and most important attitudes within academic pursuit is altering. Quote, the archaeoacoustic research group known as SB ask us to take into consideration that it is possible to perceive a magnetic field by empirical observation and in the same way to pursue a higher state of consciousness during meditation or rituals in the presence of strong infrasounds. They continued, if one were to extend this research to the ruins of the other six temples, it may provide further insight." End quote. We find these claims interesting, especially due to the popularization of the acoustic knowledge regarding the Hypogeum in Malta. Additionally, ours and others repeated reports of the mass burial found there. Nearly 7,000 separate remains discovered there some claimed as seemingly having alien origins, found buried at the Hypogeum. It is, ironically, a story and discovery which has been long attempted to be buried itself. Yet these acoustic properties are undoubtedly incredibly intriguing, possibly groundbreakingly important, especially when one considers it is accompanied with a claim of undisturbed burial grounds and when one considers what was claimed to have been found among the burial in Malta, a discovery we have previously covered. Somatash, within Turkey, is undoubtedly highly compelling. Just over a year and a half ago, we covered some astonishing discoveries once made in Malta. It is a structure that was undoubtedly once created by people, or indeed beings, of an incredible intelligence. Among its many impressive features is its seemingly perfect control of sound. When one stands in a certain place known as the Oracle Room within the structure, 
and merely speaks at a normal volume. Their voice is not only heard throughout the structure, but it is also, somehow, ingeniously amplified. Additionally, and perhaps most intriguing regarding the discovery, which was once buried under eons of sediment, were the remains that were found there. As if once invaded and all its inhabitants killed, containing thousands of often headless corpses. However, there were a number of these bodies which not only still possessed their heads, but were described to look exactly like that, which today would be recognized as greys, a supposed race of alien beings that have long been rumored to have visited Earth and, according to some alternative researchers and whistleblowers alike, possibly inhabit underground bases here upon our planet. These bodies, unfortunately, are predictably now missing. However, this amazing ancient structure is not the only one to be found within Malta. There are countless anomalous buildings throughout the country, all seemingly explained away or brushed under the rug by modern academia. Tarxian temples making up a number of these so often overlooked sites. The Hal Tarxian temple, for example, is the location of the Great Earth Mother statue, a monument with blocks weighing up to 50 tons each. Furthermore, there are many other lesser known or indeed academically shared ancient curiosities found throughout the temple complex, such as spirals and precise animal carvings, an extremely ancient form of concrete, hold stones, seemingly drilled out with the use of modern day power tools and much more. The Tarxian consists of three separate, yet attached, temple structures. The main entrance to which, being a modern reconstruction dating from 1956, when the whole site was excavated and restored due to the clearly exquisite nature of many of the decorated slabs discovered on site, they were salvaged and relocated for protection, now housed within the Museum of Archaeology in Valletta. Also of interest is that many believe Tarxian provides rare insight into how the megaliths were moved. Apparent stone rollers were found left outside the South Temple. However, this long-attested theory does not explain how such people moved these stones over rough terrain, or indeed masterfully placed them atop one another. How a group placed far back within Earth's history achieved such awe-inspiring details within the construction of Tarxian. Where did the rumored alien remains go? Who stole them? Why such secrecy surrounding these remains? Was the site perhaps built with the help of an outside intelligence? Perhaps these were the remains of the builders, with later human inhabitants buried with their perceived gods. We find such sites, their advanced nature, and indeed the attached conspiracies, to be highly compelling. There are many ancient sites which we have already covered here on our channel that, regardless of the unexplained features we continue to expose, are little researched or indeed revisited by mainstream academia. These sites are predictably given an illogical explanation for their origin and creation, dismissed and ignored, as if the book regarding their history is complete and thus closed from further study. However, there exist some sites that required such a long time excavation that many researchers, some funded, others with independent interests, were able to reveal simply astonishing features, ancient feats of engineering, before they were attributed to groups who were simply incapable of achieving them. The Hypogeum in Malta is one such place, a place we have covered before, that regardless of the academic denial of unexplained discoveries, continues to be well known for the 6,000 ancient burials found within the ruins, with no less than six elongated unexplainable skulls, possibly attached to corpses discovered amongst them. These reported remains later vanished and are now utterly denied as having ever existed. Yet so many researchers became aware of these discoveries, later sharing this cover-up with the world, the official museum and curator tasked with the responsibility of caring for the site and the countless remains found within is still, to this day, 
inundated year by year with requests and calls regarding these unexplainable remains. So many, in fact, that the official body was compelled to put up an official statement regarding the lack of any such remains in their care, along with a denial of them ever having existed. However, there are many more anomalies, no less astonishing, still hidden within the hypogeum. Anomalies which are no less difficult to explain, or indeed deny as existing. Known as the Oracle Room, there is a place within this complex construction, which if one stands upon a specifically made altar, their voice can mysteriously be heard throughout, even at speaking level, as if amplified and complemented by the structure's entire design. Yet the most interesting thing regarding this incredible feature is the resonance in which it converts one's voice to and the effect this can have on the human brain. Known as the holy frequency, the hypogeum not only carries one's voice throughout, but does so at 111 hertz. Paul Devereaux, an archaeoacoustician, a professor from Cambridge University in the UK, has also discovered that the burial mounds of Cairns also resonated sounds at this mysterious 111 hertz. Devereaux investigated this intriguing relation of 111 hertz and found out something quite interesting. He realized there were many ancient texts describing beliefs which are based on a divine sound or divine frequency principle. According to Devereaux, Pythagoras created his musical scale starting with the note A which curiously resonates at the frequency of 111 hertz. Additionally, further research with MRI scans has shown that the brain switches off the prefrontal cortex and also deactivates the language center that is responsible for holistic processing, creativity, intuition, and inducing an emotional plateau at exactly 111 hertz. This reaction many field tests revealed resulted in an experience described as a divine level of meditation in a number of subjects. This trance, some now believe, allows one to get connected with the universe, God, or a creator. The question is, who knew such advanced knowledge so far back within antiquity? How were they able to create such stone structures which amplified one's voice to exactly this frequency? It seems preposterous to continue to attest that this amazing structure was somehow built by our lesser capable modern ancestors over 3,500 years ago. With such amazing discoveries and cover-ups which have been made here, we feel that we have merely scratched the surface in modern times of the secrets this mysterious place must hold. It is a place which is undoubtedly highly compelling. In 1902, an incredible discovery was made in Malta, a discovery which has been covered up for over a century. While digging down to create foundations for a new building construction, workers discovered something profound. It is best described as an ancient, though it's sanctuary. Within this underground structure, numerous amazing discoveries have been made, including a room known as the Oracle Room, which if spoken in, reverberates the voice of the speaker throughout the huge complex. Within this room along with others, many statues of human forms have been discovered. A sleeping woman in particular was found in the Oracle Room. All the statues are of larger form women. The reason for this is unknown, like the reasons for so many other things within this fascinating place. The structure is dated at well over 5,000 years old. In fact, it is the oldest known official dated structure ever discovered. It makes you wonder why it is not covered more publicly, and once revealed, that 7,000 remains of possible aliens were discovered at this place, and subsequently stolen and covered up, you begin to suspect sinister motives. Indeed, within this buried structure the remains of 7,000 beings were found, all with long skulls. What is interesting about these skulls however, and what sets them apart, was that no evidence of cranial knitting or even past binding was discovered upon analysis, along with a long list of abnormalities that lent museum specialists towards the conclusion that these skulls were not human. Subsequently stolen, vanishing without trace, that is however apart from Dr. Anton Ifsad and his colleague Dr. Charles Savon of Ventura, initial research studies recorded along with photographic and illustrative documentation. The abnormalities included, but were not limited to, 
the lack of a fossa, a lack of cranial knitting lines, abnormally developed temporal partitions, apparent drill holes and swollen occiputs, as if struggling with pressures. The largest group of all of these skulls all lack cranial knitting, and lack any evidence of skull binding or artificial elongation in any form. This is a rare similarity shared with skulls found in Egypt and South America. It is also unique within the world of pathology, were these skulls from an ancient alien race, living in a highly developed complex? Ultimately killed by man and their remains stacked within the structure? Maybe they didn't taste very nice. The website Ancient Origin dug up this amazing excerpt from National Geographic. From an examination of the skeletons of the polished Stone Age, it appears that the early inhabitants of Malta were a race of long skull people of lower medium height, akin to the early people of Egypt who spread westward along the north coast of Africa, when some went to Malta and Sicily and others to Sardinia and Spain. That profound conclusion was made by National Geographic magazine January to June, 1920. Prior to 1985 the skulls were on display at the Archaeological Museum of Valletta, they were then taken down from public view and put into storage, they were never seen again. Apart from one newspaper that accomplished attaining permission to photograph the collection and cover the story, briefly after them being put into storage, all thanks to Robert Zemid, leader of the Maltese Tourist Board. This was over 30 years ago and nothing has been heard of them since. What exactly did these 7,000 skulls belong to? How did they build the Oracle Wood? Were they an alien race? If not, why the cover-up? Why has more public coverage of one of the oldest known prehistory discoveries not been made? We are said to share genetics with Neanderthals and that something wiped them out. Many suspect we were the culprits of this extinction, like so many other species that once dwelled on this earth. Maybe these creatures came to the same untimely demise. But without the remains, we may never know.